Uncle BHD here, and this is the newest RED camera. This little guy right here. It's called the RED Komodo. And this is one of the things I was looking forward to most at the beginning of this year. Now, you know, 2020 has gone a little bit sideways and a lot of things didn't go how we thought they were, but I will say cameras, especially in the last like month, have been insane. We got the 8K Canon R5 and the R6 came out. The 12K Blackmagic camera was revealed and the Sony a7S III just took the world by a storm. And by the way, almost that entire Tesla Model Y autofocus video was shot on a7S III. So if you wanna see that footage, that's there. So now this, this fascinating little red camera, it's the most, probably the most niche. I'm sure 99% of people watching this probably have no intention of getting a red Komodo. But for me, for a lot of video creator friends like me, this is maybe the most exciting of those cameras because it's potential is through the roof. So, okay, let me just start with this. What is Red Komodo? It's Red's mini cine, mini cine camera. It's their, it's their mini cine camera. The whole thing is essentially a two pound, four inch by four inch cube. It has a 6K Super 35 sensor, a Canon RF mount. It has a small built-in touchscreen up at the top. It has autofocus and it shoots to CFast cards. And it'll cost right around $6,000. But the most important fact is it's not out yet. This camera's not done yet. It's basically in beta. So matter of fact, every Komodo you've seen out in the wild has been some custom color, whether it's blue, yellow, or even the one they're starting to make more of now, the white Stormtrooper one, which I think looks sick. Or this pretty sweet looking matte black everything MKBHD edition red Komodo. Thanks, Red. I mean, now I still paid for it. I still paid full price for it. But, you know, thanks, Red, for the, the little logo custom engraving and the map like everything touch. That's nice. It's pretty on brand. Good look. Uh, so I think we'll start here with everything that makes the Komodo just like other Red cameras. And then we'll get into everything that's different from other Red cameras and potentially better. So the areas where this camera is most similar to other Red cameras are some of the most important, which are the image, the types of files you're going to be working with, and just the overall look that you can get out of this camera. It is a smaller sensor, and from that I've noticed the image is a little bit more noisy, but in general, Komodo footage will look and feel and grade and work like Monstro and Helium footage. In fact, and I was, I was gonna wait till the end of the video to say this, but just so you know, this entire video is being shot on Komodo. I have, I have two. So the Komodo is shooting this, the Komodo I'm working with, and you can see if you can tell the difference. I don't know if you will. I think by the time it goes through YouTube and hits your screen, it'll be a little harder to tell the difference, but it should still look pretty good. So this whole video is Komodo test footage. But yeah, on the upside, you're still getting 6K R3D RAW files or 4K ProRes if you want it. You're getting the, in my opinion, awesome red color science. You're getting that hefty 15 stops of dynamic range, which is a few more stops than even the R5 and the A7s of the world. And it puts it much more in the world of other cinema cameras. You're getting global shutter. There is no in-body image stabilization, but not having rolling shutter, again, puts it up with cinema cameras instead of mirrorless cameras. And you also get some of the other weird little quirks, downsides of RED cameras too. One of the big ones is you don't get slow motion at full frame. Anytime you wanna change resolution, it crops into the sensor and you max out 6K full frame at like 40 FPS. So if you wanted to shoot 60 or 120, you're gonna be cropped in. That's something all RED cameras do. But from that point on, it's very different from other RED cameras. And it's much more of a, a hybrid, feels like, between the RED cameras that I'm familiar with and the mirrorless cameras in that whole world that you guys probably all know about and that's kind of on fire right now. First of all, it has the Canon RF mount. So the same mount as the EOS R and the EOS R5, that whole family, which is really interesting. And I'll get more back to that in a second. It also has dual battery slots on the back for off-the-shelf Canon BP series batteries. I've been shooting with these BP 975s, which you could easily go with the smaller 955s when I get my hands on them, but just these two batteries by themselves, you can shoot for well over three hours. And since there are two, technically they're hot swappable. So it runs down one battery at a time. And as soon as one of them gets kind of low, I can replace it and it starts off on the other. That part is sweet. And then it shoots to CFast 2.0 cards, like I mentioned in the beginning. So no proprietary SSDs, no mini mags, just CFast cards that you can buy off the shelf in B&H somewhere. I still wish there were dual card slots, like there are dual batteries, but there's only one here and that's kind of a bummer. I really like when we see dual card slots in the mirrorless world. So 
how does that translate to actually using the camera? Well, a lot of the biggest fundamental things translate perfectly. Just having a smaller, lighter camera that you can throw in the corner of a car or in just smaller spaces or even on a gimbal. I could never fly a Monstro camera on a Ronin S, for example. This, you could, it's only two pounds. So that's been awesome. But the actual experience and performance of using this camera for me so far has been a really mixed bag. And that's because this camera is in beta. Like the software is in beta and just the whole camera is in beta. So RF lens support is actually still a work in progress for this lens. So right now, if you put an RF lens on the camera, it doesn't communicate any info electronically yet. And actually included in the box when I unbox the Komodo Live, you might have seen on Instagram, you will find an RF to EF adapter. So you can adapt a whole Canon EF mount collection to actually communicate with this camera through the adapter. The menus are pretty basic, and I think they'll mainly stay this way, but they have room to improve as far as responsiveness goes. Again, to feel closer to that mirrorless world. And right now, there is not a lot of officially supported accessories yet. Like these one terabyte CF cards I have that I'm shooting to, every time I boot the camera, it gives me a warning about how they're not official media and how I should be very, very careful. And then autofocus. Autofocus is maybe, maybe the biggest indicator overall of the state of this camera. So RED cameras in the past and many cinema cameras generally don't have autofocus or any sort of autofocus system you would rely on. But with Komodo, plan on it, but it's in beta. And from my experience, that, that just really means it's a very rudimentary, very simple, seemingly contrast-based autofocus system. There's no eye tracking, there's no subject tracking or anything fancy like that. It's mainly just tap on the screen and hope it focuses. And so, so far it's worked decently well depending on the lens you're using. So you can touch something on the screen to focus and it should shift and sort of rack focus relatively quickly, but depending on what lens, that can involve a good amount of hunting or missing focus or non-response, which would of course be unacceptable in the mirrorless world from like an R5. And it also, like I mentioned, doesn't work at all with RF lenses. There's no electronic communication. So it's all happening through an adapter. So I guess bottom line is it's, it's not as reliable on main shoots as I would want it to be if I wanted an autofocus camera, which is kind of a great pun because we're considering shooting maybe our next autofocus car episode video with Komodo. But again, for those videos, we rely on autofocus. So it's kind of a toss up. Maybe weigh in in the comments if you think we should try it. But think about this. Think about a future where you can use any Canon RF lens, any Canon lens, even with an adapter, and the native autofocus just works and it's amazing. The thing about those incredibly advanced eye tracking and all those autofocus systems with Sony and Canon and everyone else is they didn't happen overnight. Those take a long time to develop and work on and get better at. And Red's never really had to do that. So we'll see how long it takes them and whether or not they can make a good autofocus system. But imagine that future. And that's really kind of a big point for this camera as a whole. Imagine a future where there's a whole ecosystem of competitive third party accessories instead of just the hyper expensive first party Red stuff. That's been a barrier to entry for so many people for so long. I've never really been able to recommend a RED camera for anyone, despite how much I love them, because you don't just get a RED camera, you also have to get the RED SSDs, you have to get the RED monitors, you have to get the RED modules, and all of that cost adds up over time. But with a camera like this, if it's out for longer and it starts to get traction, well, then you start to see the wooden cameras and the small HDs and the cages and all these things start to be more popular, even the batteries and the media. So for people who do like the look of a RED camera and the image quality, but haven't really been able to get into the world, maybe, maybe over Raven, maybe Komodo, maybe this is that new entry point. I feel like I'm personally a proponent of better image quality in general. People love saying I focus on the cameras too much in like smartphone reviews, but I can't help it. I want people to be able to record and make the highest quality stuff. And the better cheap cameras get and the cheaper good cameras get, the happier we can all be. And all of that is not even to mention the already pretty impressive remote app control with very little latency thanks to the Wi-Fi antenna right on the side of this camera. So let me end this by just answering maybe the most frequently asked question I've heard from some of my creator friends, which is, should I buy, should I get a Red Komodo? Right now, honestly, probably 
No. And that's not just from the stuff like that I don't like about this camera. It's been a few weeks and these are my impressions, but there are some things I don't like. Like I don't like that there is no HDMI, only SDI for video out. I don't like that the shape of the camera is a box, but it isn't as modular as some of the other boxes. Like they could have made it more ergonomic, like the shape of a mirrorless camera, for example, since there are no modules. I don't like that the display is fixed up at the top. It's almost unusable for a lot of angles that I like to shoot and something that feels a little more detached or even swivelly would have been awesome. But it's not any of that. I wouldn't recommend Komodo because people buying a camera right now who really need a reliable camera with an autofocus system or just all of its features right now, uh, that's not what you're getting. So I guess my number one rule about buying tech, and I've said this before, is don't buy a piece of tech based on the promise of future software updates. You should buy it based on the fact that you like what it is right now. I'll talk about that in smartphone videos. And I think that the ceiling for this camera, the potential of once there's an ecosystem of third-party accessories around it, of once it has all of its features, once the menus get nice and fast, once autofocus works, and you can use this small little camera and get red video quality, the ceiling for this camera is so high that once it gets anywhere near that ceiling, then, I would recommend getting a red Komodo. But there's gotta be, you know, people like me willing to go out and test it early before that point. So really that's pretty much it. I just wanted to, I know this isn't a video most people are gonna care a lot about or watch, but I'm excited about these cameras and I felt like sharing and a lot of you are asking. So here you go. It's a red Komodo. Thanks for watching <laughs> and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.